Greetings, viola students. This video is for viola issues and the viola parts in particular. I'm going to start with the warm up. At circle A, we have a exercise that helps us with French folk song. Just like in the violin video, I'm going to suggest that you start with one measure of quarter notes and then the dotted half note to get the bow speed pattern change. One, two, three, long, up, bow. And do it on all kinds of different strings if you like. One, two, that bow speed change between the quarter note bow speed and the dotted half note bow speed, which is much slower. How much slower is it? What's the math on that one? Um, so the reason that the first four measures are empty is because there's no E string on the viola. And so that's when the violins and the basses play. And then you come in and measure five. Um, once you've done three quarter notes and a dotted half note, the next thing you do is try all three measures of quarter notes, which is, adds up to nine quarter notes, and the dotted half note, like so. One, two, three, two, two, three, two, three, long, up, bow. And you go through the exercise like this. Okay? Uh, going on to exercise circle B, this is a scale. Same bowing pattern, but now moving fingers with the notes of a D scale. Circle C is very similar, but now it's a more active left-hand part. We're going to play tiny noodles. Each measure looks kind of like a little note noodle, up and down. And I encourage you to move and adjust your fingers if something doesn't sound right. You might have heard my fingers making an adjustment. Circle D is following a pattern that begins with a skip and then a step backwards. Then a skip and a step backwards. Letter circle D. <laughs> circle E, it's very similar to circle D, but it makes another uh, step after the step down. So a skip up, a step down, and then a step back up, and then a skip again. And it follows that pattern all the way up the scale. This is not exactly the bow pattern that you want for French folk song. It's actually quite a bit more challenging. So if you can play at circle E, you've definitely got fr French folk song in your uh, range of skill. Circle E.
F and G are two scales written out in whole notes. The F circle scale is a D major scale with C sharp and F sharp. The G circle scale is a D scale, but with the F changed to F natural and the C sharp changed to C natural. I'll talk about that in a minute. First, how to do the scale. You can play the scale as it's originally written, a whole note per bow. One, two, three, four. I'll play the first part. so on. My idea with this section though is that you can make the scale interesting and more challenging by using some different rhythms. So if you look at letter circle H to circle V, every one of those is a one measure rhythm that can be found in our four fifth grade area festival music repertoire. So for example, I could take the rhythm at circle H, which is four quarter notes, and apply it to every measure that's in circle F. So replacing a whole note with the rhythm in circle H, which is four quarter notes. Let me play from the next part of the sketch. Uh, let me use the rhythm at J and continue on. some of these rhythms will make you change direction in the next measure based on how many bow strokes you have in the rhythms. It's up to you whether you want to do a lift to reset your bow or if you just like to play it as it comes as they say. So for example at letter N we have an odd number of notes so any measure that starts down the next measure will start up. Here's the F circle scale with the N circle rhythm. circle rhythm continuing the scale. Here is the P circle rhythm. Which rhythm is this? At circle W, we have a section where we get to play uh, low two at letter W and letter X. Letter W is on the D string, letter X is on the G string. And we use a tremolo bow as well. So here's an example of a tremolo bow. It's just a very fast back and forth, down bow, up bow on the bow. Some people call it a sizzle or a, uh, don't call it a shake. Now, some people's tremolos are going to be very, very fast indeed. They might even seem to break the sound barrier. And some people's tremolos may only go so fast. That may be as fast as you can go. I think the secret, though, is to stay very relaxed in the hand. So uh, a jello hand for the bow hand. Try not to tense or tighten any muscles to make the tremolo happen. And only go as fast as you feel comfortable. <laughs> Excuse me, so here is circle W. Hopefully you saw that low two action. Normally our second finger is here for F sharp, but in the piece Mars block, we need to be able to play the note F natural, and that's a low two. And this is to help our violins hear their low F natural on their E string. Here's the same thing at letter X. Now, even though we don't have to play a low two in the piece Mars Walk, I think it's good to learn along with the violin players. And that's what it looks like right there.
at letter Y, I give you the chance to try a low one, just like the violin part. A low one is between the first tape and the nut, halfway there. So normally your first finger lands here, and now for low one A flat, a B flat, now for low one B flat at letter Y, that's where it goes. Here's how it sounds. You can try letter Y at the sa same time as other people are trying letter X. For letter W, you'd have to play it on the G string. That's not written on the music. You'll have to figure that out yourself. Good luck. The next part, from letter Z to the rest of the exercises, are scales that help us practice slurs in different parts of the bow and different parts of the measure. The curvy line means to connect two different notes in the same bow direction. And I think the most fun way to start this off is just to imagine that piece Jaws or uh, the beginning of Baby Shark. And then, instead of making the last note short and stopping, just make it even. And you've done a slur. And before you know it, you can put more than two notes in the same direction. The faster your finger moves, the more notes you can fit in. In BB, we are slurring the first two quarter notes. And those slurs will always happen on a down bow. And I think that's why I want to start on letter BB. So, slurring is that curvy line that connects two or more notes in the same bow direction. Here's letter BB for the warm up. The next scale I like to go to is AA. This puts the slur now on the up bow direction. One, two, ready. The string crossing moments. Those are the trickiest ones. And as a viola player or a violin player, it can be useful to use the fourth finger instead of crossing the string with a bow. And other times you may prefer to cross the string rather than use fourth finger. So here's CC that puts the slur on the down bow. And what this is going to do is it's going to reverse the bow direction because I have two quarters instead of the half note. Here's CC. Z.
Yes, I like that order much better. All right, now on to the pieces. I should mention that the last empty measures are meant for you to write in any actual notes you may want to, or just for scratching something out about the piece or a reminder. Those are for you. Be creative.